Hi folks, um, I want to show you a couple of things um, that several people missed in the moment of inertia experiment and so I'm making this little video here because I think I can probably show it to you visually and you might understand it better than trying to explain it in all in words. So there's the setup of the part two of the of the uh, moment of inertia experiment. Notice the mass hanging on a string across the pulley and I'm going to zoom in here. There's the rotator part of it. Okay, so now um, when you find the torque that's being applied to this, okay, the torque being applied is the basically the weight of that mass hanging on the end of the string and it's pulling, let me kind of zoom in here, this shaft that the ro rotator sits on, okay, that diameter there, that would be D drum that was given to you, the capital D subscript drum. So that's that distance there, the 4.8 centimeters, whatever it was. Okay, so when you find the torque that's being applied to this, that distance, well, half of it, the radius of that would be the moment arm of the torque. So half of that times the tension in this string. So that would have been your torque. Most people actually did that correctly. Almost everybody did, I think. Where a lot of folks messed up, though, is this. Okay, that's the rotator. Over here's the ring we're putting on it. Okay, and let me try if I can see if I can put it on. Okay, kind of hard to do with one hand. Okay, so now we've got the ring actually on the uh, rotator. Okay, so we would have it, you know, I'm winding it up now, and then the mass would actually pull it moving. Okay, so on that table where you had to find several omega values, angular velocity, okay, um, so you find the linear velocity first with the, uh, here's your photo gate. So the little pink flag on the, on the ring is passing through the gate. And the distance, the size of the flag d divided by the time, that would give you your velocity, your linear velocity, as this is turning around, okay? So that's fine. Most people got that right. Almost everybody did, I think. A few people thought it was something else. But anyway, most people got that. So that's the linear velocity. It's just the size of the pink flag divided by the time value that the photo gate gives us through the computer there, okay? Now, the angular velocity, that's where a lot of folks kind of got confused, I think, because you got to keep in mind where we're finding the linear velocity is on the very outer edge of the ring, okay? So the linear velocity we're finding would actually be the linear velocity that would be taking place here on the outer edge of the ring because that's where the uh, <coughs> flag is taped on. So the radius, or the moment arm, from the center of rotation would be from the flag to the center of this, okay? Which would be basically the same as, well, half of the diameter of the ring itself, okay? Whoops, I'm not, don't have that view. So you were given the diameter of this ring, the outer diameter, half of that, that radius would be the R that it would, you would use when you would say velocity, linear velocity divided by radius R would give you the angular velocity, the omega. The diameter you would want, the R value you would want would be from the middle of this to the flag, okay? So, which is basically half the diameter of this ring. What a lot of folks mistakenly did was they used that same radius of the shaft underneath there, okay? But the velocity is not taking place there. That would be a different velocity. That'd be a different linear velocity. So you can't really use that, all right? So, uh, so a lot of folks use the same radius as that, but that's not what you want. Because the linear velocity we're using to find angular velocity is not the velocity at that location, it's at this location out on the ring, okay? So a lot of folks got mixed up on that. I can understand it was kind of hard not being here, you couldn't really see all that, but anyway, that was a pretty common mistake, okay? Another thing that um, several folks also kind of missed the boat on is um, the delta theta, the angular displacement. What we're talking about is, okay, let's say this is wound up and uh, let's say it's spinning. 
we, we get three successive velocities, three consecutive velocities, okay? So the flag goes through, makes one pass, goes through, makes a second pass, goes through again, makes a third pass. So that was the three velocities, we three delta t's, and we got the velocity of those three different times, okay? So basically it's getting faster, you're getting bigger velocity as it goes around, all right? Uh, so what would be the angular displacement from, say, when it passes through once to when it passes through again? Well, how many times did it go through? One revolution, right? Two pi radians. So the delta theta between any two, any two consecutive velocities would have just been two pi radians, just one full revolution. So a lot of folks had something else for that, and I don't really know where you got it. I think it was probably so simple that you just probably didn't think it, it sometimes things are too simple you don't really think of them but that's all there really was to it just two pi okay um if you use the first and the third velocity then it would have been four pi but most people didn't do that uh, and let me show you really quickly going over here to the physical pendulum setup okay that was the first part of the lab and most people got most of those calculations right people did pretty well on that actually but the question one of the questions was kind of missed a lot. Uh, we're talking about the, now I'm holding this phone with my hand, it's not going to be very elegant, but anyway, uh, say we, uh, oops, I messed that up of course, and I'm not going to start this again for that reason. Okay, so anyway, uh, okay, so you've got the pendulum, the meter stick passing through the photo gate there, okay. So that first question was, the velocity that we're getting by reading the time in the photo gate as the meter stick passes through. How is it an approximation? And there are actually at least two reasons it's an approximation. Okay. Now we're not talking about error sources like wind resistance or uncertainty of measurements. That's actually different. We're talking about when we do the calculation, we know we're approximating it not just because it might be off due to error, but we already know we're approximating it even if there were no error sources. And how are we? Well, it's actually, the velocity is changing the entire time, okay? It's, it's getting faster and hits the maximum there and then starts to get, hits the maximum there and then starts to get slower, okay? Um, all right, so we're taking the delta t over uh, the time during which the meter stick passes through the photo gate there, okay? So it's going to be the distance, the size of the, of the, um, actually how wide the meter stick is, divided by delta t, which is actually an average velocity. Now we're using it as if it were the instantaneous velocity when the meter stick passes through the bottom most point of the trajectory, okay? It's not actually that, so it's going to be a little bit off for that reason, but, you know, it's an easy way that we can do it, so that's why we do it. It works fairly well. So it, it's an approximation in that sense. It's actually an average velocity over a short distance um, as opposed to an instantaneous velocity is what we would really prefer, okay? So most people actually got that, but another reason why it's an approximation is, well, if you were to look at one point on the meter stick, and you would have to look at the one that's right where the eye of the photo gate is, well, if you, if you just say picked out one point and followed it, what's the shape of its trajectory? Well, it's going to be a curve, right? Okay. So if you were going to find average velocity by the distance traveled through the gate by time, that distance wouldn't really be the um, width of the meter stick. It would actually be like a small circular arc, which would be from one from one side of the meter stick to the other, which is, it's gonna be pretty close, not gonna be very different, but, but basically it's gonna be like an arc, okay? Like an arc across the meter stick, not a straight distance across the meter stick. So it's an approximation in that sense. Okay, it doesn't throw it off too much really, but technically that is an approximation. A few people actually got that right, but most people didn't seem to think of that. But anyway, just showing you what the deal was on that. All right, so okay, most people did pretty good really, um, I think under the circumstances, but just showing you a couple of places where, where um, you know, some things that were commonly missed.
Alrighty.